Welcome back to No Man's Sky, everyone. Jason here, and we are doing a starter playthrough. So if you've never played the game, this is the series for you. Or if you're coming back after a while and you just don't know any of the new update stuff, this is the game for, this is the series for you. So we just fixed the first part of our engine, our uh, pulse engine in our uh, starship, but now we need to go get a hermetic seal and we found out that it is way over here. And so before you start off, you know, go after the hermetic seal. Remember, you're going to need a lot of sodium or batteries because they're going to throw a storm at you to get you used to the uh, elements of the game. So whenever you're on a planet that has a hazardous, uh, a hazardous atmosphere and even normal uh, planets, they just have hot storms. They will just randomly occur. And so... You just need to be ready for it with your hazard protection, meaning you need uh, sodium or batteries in order to take care of that. Let's do that. Life support systems are getting kind of low. I'm gonna have to get some oxygen for that. Or maybe I can make some uh, life support gel. And you do that with uh, carbon and, ooh, excuse me, and uh, dihydrogen. Incoming storm, there you go. And we did see a uh, a trading outpost over here. It's near the uh, where the gel, uh, the hermetic seal is. I think it's over in this direction, over here. I'm not positive about that, but it should be like right in this direction. Let's see if we can actually get it going here. Let's see, we can see it from here. Can't see anything, and then the storm is gonna move in. It's really gonna make it hard to see. And you'll notice whenever there's a storm or whenever you're taking a lot of uh, hazard damage, your screen will turn different colors. So like if it's a hot damage, your screen will turn red. If it's radiation damage, you see it's turning yellow and green. So your screen will change colors depending on what you are getting damaged by. That's just to let you know, hey, you're taking a lot of damage. Like right now, this storm is really messing with my, uh, with my hazard protection, but that's okay. Oh, keep going, keep going. Life support will give a sub of oxygen right there. Oh, there's oxygen over here. You see those red plants right there? We're good. I would also uh, refill my mining beam and refill my hazard protection with my battery right here. Boom. Because batteries are more efficient than the sodium. So you use one battery and it refills you completely, whereas sodium, you're going to need like 10 or 15 sodiums to refill you completely. All right, here we are. We're at these uh, shelters right here. Wasn't too bad. Let's get in here and get out of the storm. Oh, no, I went to the wrong way. I thought it was the other side. Oh, no. This is the side. Duh. All right. And now that we're inside... Now that we're inside, we're protected from the elements. You still, you still see the edges of my screen kind of yellowish. Yeah, they'll fade away eventually. My first aid. Give me my health is at maximum. Accessing archive. Six of seven logs corrupted. So there's one log left. Entry 4924A follows. No one making this recording in case leaving behind something in the fabricator might be of some use and there's like buzzing because it sounds buzzing sounds D visor damaged can't find ship uh oh someone was out here stuck like me they couldn't find their ship though and so they left me a hermetic seal the log finishes and the machine whirs to life spitting out supplies i have the hermetic seal i need to repair my ship Whoever it was that led me here, whoever left this message, perhaps they found themselves in the same situation I do now. Yes. And now that I got my uh, hermetic seal, I know the recipe. I know how to make it now. I know the blueprint to make more hermetic seals. So definitely that's a big plus. Let's go in here. We always check these uh, these uh, shelters because you might find a cube like this. These will give you either uh, navigational data or they will give you nanites, one of the two. And I got nanites out of that, okay. Nothing else in here? Nope, nothing else around here. Now there should be a, a broken module around here. You'll see anything smoking or something? Nothing, man, nothing. 
Wait, wait. Smoking. Oh, no. That's just a thing. Smoking. Let's see if we scan these animals. Do we already have it? No, we did not. Let's scan this animal. Make our money. Got him. Okay. Animal is scanned. Now we need to analyze objects for rewards. Oh, there you go. We have these red little containers. They give you uh, random things. And the white uh, cube container, the white box, will give you health. No matter what. Well, no matter not, you know, if you need health, that's what it will give you. But it will never, it will never give you anything else. Well, let's get some carbon while we're here. Do we have anything else we can examine? Oh, let's do that real fast. This that's part of our tutorial is to analyze things. Okay. Now we need to locate my starship, of course, and it's gonna be the starship symbol on my screen. Let's get that done. Okay. And it is right there. Boom. So now we just need to go back to our starship because we have our hermetic seal. But there was a... Uh... Oh, there it is. And it is not a trading outpost. That's a minor settlement. I love it. Let's get down here. We can go to that minor settlement. We can buy some stuff. We can trade some stuff. We really don't have any mu anything to sell, really. But a minor settlement is a great thing to find early on. Did I scan you guys already? I did. You guys are already scanned. Great. What about, oh, no. This little tiny guy. Look at that. Holy cow. How small is this little thing? That is a tiny, tiny animal. Look at him. Look at this little guy. He's like a little cat running around. A cat with some gigantic eyeballs. Ew. Okay. Never mind. Not as cute as I was imagining. Not at the beginning, anyway. Got all these guys. Okay, yeah, we've already scanned you. We're good. We're just gonna move along. But a uh, a minor settlement will sell you a whole bunch of stuff as well. So keep that in mind. They will have upgrades. They will have uh, materials for you to buy stuff. So if you ever see a building with an attached landing pad like that, that means it's a minor settlement. That's the only building that has an attached landing pad on it. Basically because it's a shop. They want people to to land for aliens to land and trade items. And so, yeah, of course they have a landing pad. Oh, we've already done that. What we can do is we can farm some uh, cobalt and sell the cobalt for a lot of money. So let me do that for a minute. I'll, I'll see you guys in a second once I farm this cave of all the cobalt. All right, so that cave was not really that big, but that's okay. I've gotten some, and I'm going to get these subterranean relics. I'm going to pick these up because I'm about to just sell them right over here at the miner settlement. Oh, okay, never mind. There's a lot of them over here. Wow, look at that. Okay, the cave is just weird. There's like an opening because I went down that direction, and there was nothing really down there. But then we have a whole bunch of this stuff over here that has a lot of cobalt in it. So definitely. Holy cow, look at this. Making tons of money. Give it to me. Come on. See, notice how I'm, I'm going faster now that my uh, up oh, and it's too hot. Dang it. Oh, well, that's okay. We, we'll save some for later. But yeah, your mining tool, when it gets hotter, it it works faster, but you don't want to overheat it because then it just stops everything. And you have to wait for it to cool down. Let's get into this miner settlement because we can sell some stuff here. We also meet the aliens of this uh, planet, which are the Corvax, the robot race. I love them. Not as much as the Gek, but I love them. As I approach the electronic life form, they instinctively start to analyze me from head to foot. They chitter adamantly, their head tilted to one side. Stationed here amidst the endless radiation, they must see so few novelties. And I don't know how to speak their language. That's why it's all in gibberish. And so you can learn words and slowly over time, you'll start seeing, you know, words pop up as you learn more words. You'll actually be able to piece together what they're trying to tell you. I mind that I know little of their kind or how they communicate. In response, the lights on their mask flash a repeating series of three, building in intensity. While I only have regular ferrite dust, I don't have pure or magnetized ferrite. I'm assuming they want magnetized ferrite. But all I only have is 
regular ferrite, so let's see if that helps them. The electronic life forms light flicker with mild disappointment. Nevertheless, they re rest their hand on my visor and thank me with a transfer of language. Okay. So he taught me some words. I would have gotten something better if I would have given him what he wanted. Oh, there's a blue cube here. I'll always check this out. Oh, wait, come on. Navigational data or nanites. There it is. Boom. And I've noticed that it's an even split. It's a 50-50 chance in my mind. I don't know the exact numbers. But it seems like you'll get navigational data or uh, nanites about 50-50. All right, and this is a market right here. That's a uh, trading terminal. Let's get in here, and we could sell some stuff. So we have eleven thousand dollars, but we could sell all these vortex cubes, and we'll make forty-three thousand. There you go. We want to keep our carbon ferrite dust. We can sell our cobalt for one hundred and fifty-one thousand. That's why you want to pick it up. Cobalt is worth a lot. Boom. And then, what else do we have? Well, we picked up some platinum. Okay, we can keep that for now. Oh, uh, well, hermetic seal, we need that to fix our ship, so we're not going to sell that. We have one dihydrogen jelly. We're going to need that. Yeah, I think we're okay, okay. Oh, we have a geode, but we can break that down for items, so no, we're, we're good on that. Now, what I would always focus on early on is get your materials and also get your uh, life support gels. So buy as many as you can, you see? I'm buying 80 of them, but it's only 19,000 bucks, so I've made 200,000. I should be okay, so let's do that. And then buy as many ion batteries as you can as well. So here we go. All 79. It's still 17,000. That's not that much. We're still making a huge profit out of this shop. All right, then you can focus on whatever other uh, materials you think you're going to need. I would say chromatic metal for sure. 27,000 for 91. Ooh, that's going to be expensive. But you know what? I'll buy that for now. And microprocessors, we're going to need a few of these. So let's buy five for 95,000. Microprocessors are really expensive. So we haven't learned how to make them ourselves yet. You can, but we don't know how to do that yet. So we have to buy them. So let's do that for now. And then well, we really, really don't have any very much anything else. So uh, let's go to oxygen, two thousand. Sodium, seven. Okay. Ferrite dust. Yeah, we'll buy all of their ferrite dust. And cobalt. We're, there's no use in buying it because we can go farm it, and it's worth a lot of money. So if you if you're paying for it, it's gonna be really, really expensive. Look at that. Just for twenty, we're spending four thousand dollars. So yeah, let's not do that. All right, I think we're okay. Now let's look at our inventory. Let's move the stuff around a little bit. So I like to keep my uh, my materials at the bottom. So let's put our oxygen and our carbon down here. Dihydrogen next to that. Sodium over right there. Now we're going to put the platinum up there and the ferrite dust over here. Same thing for the chromatic metal. And I'm just, it's a weird organization. In my mind, it works. What you guys organize however you want to. It doesn't really matter, really. Let's do that. Oh, yeah, look at that. those geodes. I got those from the uh, the uh, rocks that were giving me cobalt. So I got a whole bunch more cobalt. Yeah. Good to go. Well, let's move that over there then, and we'll put the cobalt together. Kind of color coordinated a little bit. Kind of, sort of, maybe. That's okay. But we have life support shells. So we got 80 of them, so we're set for a while. Same thing for ion batteries. So we are good. We are good to go. Oh, let's check these red boxes. Now, just because they're inside doesn't mean we cannot check them. You don't have to worry about stealing or anything like that. They don't worry about that. They're very giving in this game. Oh, we hit our first milestone. We earned 200,000 units. All right, so we uh, everything you do, you earn milestones for. Oh, we need to do our life support real fast. So let's do that. And we'll use a life support gel. Yeah. And the same thing for mining beam. We'll use our carbon. Yeah. Oh, there's purple planet. I love that. Ooh. But yeah, you earn milestones for everything you do. So for walking, you earn a milestone. Let me, let me show you the milestones. So if you go into your pause menu, your start menu, you can go to your milestones and they give you everything on foot exploration, you know, meeting aliens, collecting words. So learning words in different languages, uh, making money. Destroying ships, destroying sentinels, extreme survival. So uh, surviving on extreme planets. Like right now, we're on a normal hazard planet, but there are extreme planets that are constantly wearing down your hazard protection. So you have to be careful of those. 
uh, warping and finding all the animals on a single planet. So heck yeah, there's a ton of stuff you could do and those actually trigger uh, story progression. So you're gonna need to get those milestones higher the deeper you get into the game. So don't even worry about it. Most of the time you don't even have to worry about it. Like walking, you, you're gonna do that no matter what, you know, uh, earning money as you sell items, you're gonna be earning money and doing that. You know, destroying ships, they're gonna come up. Pirates are gonna attack you. It's gonna happen throughout the game as you progress. So don't worry about specifically targeting like a specific one. The only one I would say maybe is uh, the Extreme Worlds achievement or uh, milestone. And the same thing for uh, finding all the animals on a planet. It's really hard to find all the animals. So you see me scan the animals here. It should give me an update. Uh, I found six out of eight animals on this planet. So I need to find two more animals and I will have every animal on this planet. So that's what I would get my milestone up. But, you know, there's always going to be the last two are always the hardest ones to find. So just be aware of that. And it, you, you can find animals in water. They can be in the air. They can be on the ground. They can be in the ground. So, you know, you're going to have to look all over the place. Sometimes they only come out at night. Sometimes they only come out at day. Sometimes they're only in the northern part of the planet. Sometimes they're only in the southern part. It, they, they have a whole different variety of planet or uh, animals. And they have their different... Um, behaviors so you definitely want to keep track of that that's one of the harder ones to get the milestone and the same thing for extreme planets there's very you know they're very hard to come by these extreme planets so when you do find one you're gonna have to you know camp out on that planet for a little while and get your days up because they count days spent on the planet and it is days uh, in the game so it doesn't matter how many days you are in real life and that, so you have to be the game has to be running and you have to be on to outside on foot on the planet that's extreme. All right, oh, we have to repair it. So we have our uh, hermetic seal. Let's add that in here. Done, all right. Pulse engine is fixed completely. Now we have to fix our launch thruster and we need pure ferrite and we have a dihydrogen jelly already. So we already have that one. So what we can do is if you want to make dihydrogen jelly, it's in your uh, blueprints, in your, you can craft it. So if you hit A or X if you're on play PlayStation, but A if you're on Xbox. And in your recipes, you have one right here called dihydrogen jelly. You need 40 dihydrogen crystals to make one dihydrogen jelly. We found one in one of those boxes, so that's why you want to search those little boxes. That will help you out a ton. So let's do that. Boom. So we have that already, but now we need to uh, get pure ferrite. And how you get pure ferrite is if you refine your regular ferrite. There you, there you go. Now you can learn how to make a uh, refiner. So in order to make a refiner, hit up on your D-pad. That's your building menu. And right now we only know how to build our uh, portable refiner. So that's the only recipe we have. But eventually this menu will become huge and you'll have all kinds of different stuff you can build. You'll be able to build a base with walls and ceilings and floors and doors and everything. But right now we only know how to make a portable refiner and we need metal plating. So let's make metal plating real fast in our crafting menu. There you go. So now we can make our portable refiner. Let's place that baby right there. Yes. And once we get into the portable refiner, you're going to see a whole bunch of stuff here. Number one is your fuel supply up here that's glowing. You need to have fuel in order to run your portable refiner. So let's put fuel in there and you can only put carbon or condensed carbon, which is more refined. We only have carbon, so we're going to put that in there. And now we have the fuel. Now we need to put something in here to refine. And you can refine a whole bunch of stuff, but what we need to refine is our ferrite dust. Because if you put it in here and then it shows you, okay, it doesn't do anything yet. It'll show you if you refine ferrite dust, it will turn into pure ferrite. And so, yeah, you want to do that. So let's begin. And that's what you want. And anything you put over here, it'll tell you. And it'll also tell you right here, right next to the box, it says one to one. That means one ferrite dust equal, it will turn into one pure ferrite. Sometimes it'll take like three of an item to make one of the refined items. 
And so you're going to have to do that. Whoop, let's stop that. Yeah, we got a whole bunch of pure ferrite. We're good. We're going to put that in our inventory, that in our inventory. And we're going to exit out. And if you want to, instead of making this all the time and wasting all your materials, you can pick up the portable refiner. So if you click in your right thumbstick or... Yeah, I think it's the same on both. So right thumbstick if you're on PlayStation and on Xbox. Hold it down. There you go. You just picked it up. And you notice how I got my carbon back as well. So I have my carbon. My carbon came back. And now I have a portable refiner in my inventory. So I can keep that for later. All righty. So let's get in our uh, starship and let's get going. We can fix it completely now. So we can fix our launch thruster. It takes 50 pure ferrite. We got that. And now we're totally fixed. Yeah. Totally fixed. So now let's take off. You, you right, you right trigger to take off. Now we're flying. Now, if you're not a, uh, a first person player like me, I, I like being, you know, third person. I like the camera behind my character and my vehicle and stuff like that. If you want to change that at any time, hitch down on your D-pad, go all the way over to the left to this gear icon right here. And once you get in here, you can change that. There's other options here, but there's one that says switch starship view. And you can do this on foot too. If you want to play, play in first person where you're just running around and you have your gun out, or your multi-tool out, you could do that as well. Same exact way. Let's go to switch it. That way I can see my starship. Look at that beauty right there. Well, now we need to go out into the, in the actual space and see what's going on. Look at those stars. It's beautiful. Hellier system, Euclid galaxy. You discover this. So I've discovered this. This is a brand new galaxy. No one has ever been to this one. I love it. So now they, they kind of go through what you need to do, you know, tutorial on how to fly your ship. You, you know, you use your left thumbstick to do that, to aim where you want to go. Your right trigger hits your actual thrust. And if, you hit, if you're holding your right trigger and you hit B, you actually boost a little bit faster. But if you want to go really, really fast, all you have to do is hold down L1 and R1, or left bumper, right bumper, and boom, you pulse drive. So you're going like really, really fast right now. Yeah, we can, we're good. Oh, we have a new message coming in. Incoming transmission. Source 4925B. Please identify yourself. I'm, and it's blank, who's there? Okay, I'm Jason Place. You are not alone. Follow the, uh-oh, what, follow the what? What, what am I supposed to follow? The broadcast ends as strangely as it began. The final piece of the signal appears to be a set of planetary coordinates. All right, so they gave me coordinates to go follow. Where is it at? All right, we have coordinates. Where are they at? Oh, let's follow this arrow right here. And it is on that planet. So we can pulse drive over there. So left, bump, left bumper, right bumper, L1, L2 at the same time. Hold it down and boom, there you go. It's going to take us 30 seconds to get over to this planet. Let's scan over here. All right, so if you scan in, in your starship, you can scan different planets and see what they are. This is a Hyborian planet which has frost crystals, which is telling you it's a cold planet. We just came from a radiation planet, the other one we were just on. So this one's a cold one. And we're gonna land on this one where the signal source is. And we're gonna be able to find out what the heck is going on, who is trying to communicate with us and leaving all these clues for us. Yeah, pulse drive autopilot to coordinate markers. All right, and we're going down here, coordinate markers. And if you want to, you can scan while you're in the atmosphere. So if you click in your left thumbstick again, it'll scan and it'll show you, oh, there's an unknown building right there, you see? So there's a building there that just doesn't know what it is, but we need to land over here. So we landed, we're gonna get out. Oh, and there's a poisonous exploding plant right here. All right, and if you want to get some oxygen, you can pick off these red little pods right there, boom. And you get oxygen out of them. And you can just uh, shoot this one too and get oxygen out of the plant. Oh wait, we need to scan this plant first. 
So let's get that one real quickly. Now we get it. Okay, now if you pull up your visor, it'll go into sweeper mode. And so sweeper mode will show you where your objective is. You see how the yellow is uh, pointing me towards the right? So I'm facing a little bit too far to the left. So it's over here somewhere. So let's head in this direction. That was a terrible, terrible shoulder boost. There you go. That was a good one. Okay, so it's in this direction. It's over here. I'm guessing it's this thing right here. This crash site, it looks like. So let's get down there. And when you get close enough, it will finalize it. And so you're within range. Now it's okay. Now it tells you exactly where your mission is. So there's my, my signal source right here. What is going on? Oh, broken technology. The sparking wires of the machine generate a signal, tapping out its broadcast into the void. Whoever left this message is long gone. So let's decipher this message. Let's see what's going on. Decoding. 16, 16, 16. Entry 4925C. No fuel. Failed to reach the station. Hazard protection is low. No choice but to something underground. Deployed base computer. As well as the log entry, the signal contains plans for a base computer and a terrain manipulator. So that is a tool for you to dig underground. With any luck, the base computer will hold more information about whoever is leaving these messages. Yeah, let's extract those plans. So now we know how to make a base computer and we know how to make a terrain manipulator, which helps you dig underground. Well, yeah, so we are good to go on all this. And if you want to, you can hit these little beacons right here. This will save and chart the area you're in. Let's do that. There you go, heck yeah. So we got our uh, terrain manipulator and in the next episode, we were gonna go digging around and we're gonna get some copper in our next episode. So I will see you guys then.